Good morning and welcome to this special episode of the Smokers Lounge. I am your Chris. Uh, <laughs> well, you are our Chris. Yes, I am. How are you? This is Captain Cooper, by the way. Captain, how are you? Good morning, you do. I am indeed Captain Cooper. I, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Happy Easter to all of you who celebrate Zombie Jesus Day. And uh, yeah, Chris, uh, I'm very happy to be here on the Smokers Lounge. Finally, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> I, I'll give. Uh, it's only what about 10:30 here. You're halfway through your day, so you gotta. Yeah, give more me than a halfway. I got up at 5 a.m. this morning for work, so that sucks. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good now. I'm home. Wow. What do you actually? What do you do for work, man? I work at a bakery stand on the market, so I don't actually bake the bread myself. But I do sell it, and uh, yeah, that's what I do, and it kind of sucks, because I am not a morning person at all, I'm, uh, I'm more of an evening person. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, that's what you want first day in the morning, is some hot, you know, bagels, or rolls, or, you know, so, you gotta be up early, and make my fucking bagel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I usually go without breakfast on days that I work, just because it's so early, and I always get out of bed a little too late. But um, yeah, I, I'm not a real big breakfast man either. I I always just go for a slice of bread with a, a topping like peanut butter or whatever, and that, that's pretty much it. I was on vacation in America, or at least the USA, uh, last year, and <laughs> like the first day I got there, we had pancakes for breakfast, and that's the first day I was like, yes, pancakes, you know, uh, this is the greatest breakfast of all time, but the, the third day, I, I would just get sick to my stomach even looking at them, it was just too much for me. What I, my breakfast is usually two cups of coffee, and that's about it, I'm not, yeah, 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 I actually, more, more, for the most part, I'll forego breakfast and lunch, but I'll eat a big ass dinner, you know, I could sit and eat dinner for an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too, but that's just because I'm slow, not because I eat very much dinner. No, I, 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 I can never skip lunch. I usually get hungry halfway through my day. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that's what I did today. I worked. I got home, took a shower. Now I'm here. Uh, and th it's pretty good. That's a pretty good day. I mean, you get home that's, Yeah. You get home pretty early in the day, so you got, you know... Well, yeah, I, I told my boss, like, I, I really want to go home at 1 p.m., because well, well, the the midday shift is usually pretty lazy. So sometimes I can get off at 12 a.m. p.m. You know, you know, uh, like exactly the afternoon. And then you don't. And and sometimes if the midday crew is really lazy, I have to stay till 5 p.m. While I got up at 5 a.m. And those days are are pretty brutal. So you pretty so brutal. you cut out work early, so you don't have to clean up at the end of the day, basically. <laughs> yeah, well, that's part of the reason I, I really don't like to clean up at the end of the day, but uh, um, I also got out of work because I want to do this, and I just don't want to Well, work. actually, it's it's not Easter. Let me clarify that. No, it's By not Easter. By the time you guys see this, that's it'll true. be Easter, but it's actually the day before. It's a holiday weekend. I look at it as a holiday weekend, you know, and since you're, like, what, it's got to be about 3.30 by you now? No, it's it's actually uh, uh, four hours and ten minutes into the PM. Oh, okay. All right. So you know, I figure I got an excuse to drink because since it's four o'clock there, I could have you know a little uh, Kahlua in my coffee. I'm starting. Well, you can't see it right now, but I'm oh. having a beer. It's it's uh, less see, than. See, I want I want to be good. on your time schedule. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't really need an excuse to drink. I just uh, asked my mom, hey, can I have one of your beers? And she was like, yeah. So before this, we both came to a conclusion that we're both pretty much atheists. But yeah, yeah, at the yeah. same time... Well, I, I didn't really need to come to that conclusion. I, uh, I, I pretty much knew that. At the same time, do you indulge in holiday activities? No? No, not at all. I, in fact... Uh, I really wasn't raised that way. My parents, like, you know, they're 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 not like grumpy people or whatever, but they they really don't take to festivities too much, and they are both atheists or at least atheists now. Well, technically, my father is agnostic, but he was raised pretty brutal in the very hardcore religion scene, so they kind of scared him into believing that there is something, even though he completely abandoned the church 
a long time ago, you know. So, um, uh, we don't actually celebrate things like Christmas or Easter or whatever. And even my parents don't really want to celebrate their birthdays. They are kind of too wait, lazy for wait. that. So, you and don't have any holiday dinners or anything? No, wow. no, none at all. See, that's the only do. reason... Uh, I love holiday meals. <laughs> I love the turkey on Thanksgiving. I love the ham on Christmas, you know, or the fish core. You, you gotta remember, we are European, and we don't have Thanksgiving altogether. What? And that's not just. It's us. an American holiday. Everyone in the world should celebrate yeah. that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you like no, to believe. Actually, no, I'm. I'm not. I, uh, you know why I though. love talking to people, man? Because first of all, you have wooden shoes. No, I'm, but I love I love getting to know <laughs> people because I'm a big follower of world news. Like I'll watch the world news on the American broadcast. I'll watch the BBC world news. I love finding out what's happening in different parts of the world and with different people because it's so foreign to us. And but just like you know, we have great stories. You guys got great. You you know, it's like I'm very global in my thoughts and stuff. You know, you work. Do you go to? Do you go to? Do you still attend uh, university? Now I'm actually in uh, what I call to hear, uh, uh, what I like to call. Uh, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. That was beer. Uh, yeah, no, that's what beer does. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the beer talking. <laughs> I'm actually what I like to call an in-between year, uh, which basically means like, last year I finished high school, got my uh, degree for that or whatever, didn't know what I wanted to do, and I didn't want to waste all the money I get from the government to go to school, and because I didn't know what to do yet, I decided to wait a year till I use that, when I'm How sure what I want to do. How long can you prolong so and still get government money to go to school? That's interesting. Uh, well, because of all the budget cuts with uh, the economic crisis, I can actually, uh, I actually calculate this, and I can, if I start school next school year, uh, you know, the the first first school year that's coming up after this one, then I can still get most of it uh, uh, from the government. Uh, but after that, they will uh, implement a social loan system. <coughs> which means that eventually you'll have to pay everything back even though there's no interest on that and um, uh, it, uh, you know you, you can do pretty much as long as you want with paying it back but if I start school as uh, as early as the next school year I will pretty much get everything you, funded for me by the do government. Do you guys have a, or at uh, least most. a public army? Uh, well, yeah, well, we we have an army, of course, for for, for the country, but uh, it's uh, all conscript. I think uh, no one is, uh, you know, called upon to. Oh, well, look at uh, that! It's a guy. He's that age. Let's round him up for the army. Does work like that anymore? It's all based on you know who oh, okay. wants to apply. To oh, okay. Yeah, army. I would think it, some European countries have that. You know, you have to do three years of service. You know, um, really. Oh yeah, yeah. Germany I think Sweden, has Sweden has that. Norway, I believe, has that as well. You know, I think it's very good, actually. You know, it really it creates uh, government involvement in some degree. You know, and it kind of makes you work for the social services that you get. Yeah, that's true. But in, in Germany, I think that's a great system. Well, well, that's a great system. I uh, well, you either do a few years of service in Germany. Or you do a few years of volunteer work in Germany, and I'm kind of a lazy bastard, so I'm pretty <laughs> glad you don't have. Oh, to by the way, country. we're watching some Call of Duty gameplay that was provided by Captain Koopa, the proper Call of Duty channel. The the proper Call <laughs> but, of Duty channel. You know, I've been watching you for a long time. I think Clever Tricks or Gunhearted. I I mean, I just you know I fell into your circle, and uh, that's one thing I've always you very. To the point, Call of Duty, that's what you enjoy putting up as a video. You don't stray from that. And I really, I find most of your videos to have very good topics like uh, your last video regarding uh, rushers. Which I'm on a hundred, don't even start backpedaling now.
because I'm 100% behind you. The fucking game is, is, well, I'm thinking, it turned into a rusher's game. It might not have been intended for that. Yep. But. It's, it's all due to the map design. That's the real problem. It's so one-dimensional and close quarters based. And you know what I think? I think it's all the fault of what is actually my favorite Call of Duty game, uh, Black Ops 1. Because in Black Ops 1 they first introduced uh, the voting system for which map you wanted to play, uh, rather than just, oh I hate this map so I vote skip. So that showed Treyarch, they could track it, what maps people voted on. And the general audience of uh, of Call of Duty are just random people who want to get a line and run around and shoot for a bit, which is perfectly fine. But that also means that uh, most people would almost always vote for maps like Firing Range, Nuketown, Summit, you know, those really close range maps in uh, Black Ops 1, which all right, all right. show Treyarch, wait, wait, wait. we need to get more of those maps. Which I'm going to disagree. Okay. I'm going to disagree, I'm going to debate this with you. I don't bl- I. I don't blame it on Black Ops 1. No, I, I don't I blame, blame it on Black Ops 1. I, don't bl- I blame it on the Black Ops 1 map voting system. I think it came, it came to be when the uh, Modern Warfare 2 started putting out their DLC maps. Oh, really? It, because the maps, uh, they saw at the time that they were creating a sub-community of the first-person shooter. Um, you had people that want to play Battlefield, people that want to play Call of Duty, you know, Call of Duty series. I think Black Ops 1, although yes, they put that map voting system, they implemented the map voting system in, Black Ops 1 in general was a, one of the larger map Call of Duty games to come out. It set itself apart from the Modern Warfare uh, game. I think they were... They were experimenting a lot of different areas. Yes, that map voting system came into play, but they weren't, at the time, they were trying to get away from that uh, rusher map type. And a lot of the maps in Black Ops 1 were huge fucking maps. Yeah, well, that's kind of, well, especially if you compare it to Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 2, but if you look back at, at Call of Duty 4, and it's especially Modern Warfare 4, there were plenty of large maps in those games as well. Do you especially? Do you find? Do you play Black Ops 2 more uh, than any other game at the moment? Well, at the moment, uh, like I said, I have had very little chance to play over the past two months because, well, well, you watched the previous episode of Gun Art Coop Time, and that that's all partly because of that and work, blah blah blah. But yes, it's one of my most played games alongside Pokemon Black 2 right now. Oh, okay. I was just Pokemon wondering, Pokemon. I know that on YouTube you put up a lot of uh, Call of Duty, but... Uh, yeah, but I play loads of more games. Oh, you do? Yeah, but it's just not something uh, people on the internet want to see or I think I could make a good video out of. Especially... Uh, let's plays are fun and stuff, but I don't really like doing that for single player games because when I'm playing a single player player game, whether that's the Call of Duty campaign or a truly magnificent adventure like The Legend of Zelda, then I want to immerse myself in in that uh, single player experience that a first uh, first uh, person shooter campaign or an adventure game can provide, and I don't want to focus or at least constantly be reminded that I am not there by doing a let's play. So I just uh, put up Call of Duty gameplay commentary or you know uh, some uh, uh, Call of Duty related tip videos. Well I hate to call it that but that's what it is. Uh, Because I firstly I think I'm quite good at playing Call of Duty and first person shooters just lend themselves perfectly for this kind of video. And uh, I don't if I were good enough at Halo or Gears of War to provide some actual uh, meaningful insight on those games like I think I can with Call of Duty, then I would. But uh, I don't. Now, I, I got a message a little earlier. It was uh, I was replying to all the messages and uh, one of them was uh, someone was asking me for advice. They were saying, should I play, I think they had Tomb Raider, um, Bioshock, they were, you know, what, Bioshock yeah, Infinite or the, new one. One? What, yeah. the new one, yeah, and, uh, I, I, 
wasn't sure what they were asking in the question. So I said, well, you know, Bioshock's going to be, I think, the next big game on YouTube right now. People are going to start playing and doing Let's Plays of that. Um, it looks like a really interesting game. And uh, But it, then he came back and he said, well, I really want to play Tomb Raider. So I'm like, well, I mean, if you really want to play it, play it. You know? Yeah, man. I was like... Never play games strictly for YouTube, is, uh, is my advice. Play games because you want to play the game, and if you think you're having enough fun, and you can make it entertaining for others to watch, and you want to share it, then by all means do so. But only play the game if you like the game, you want to play the game for yeah, the exactly. game. Yeah, exactly, and I, and I said that, I was like, well, I, you know, there's nothing wrong with you even just playing the game, just to have fun, not even put it on YouTube, right? you know, I mean, uh, there's a lot of games out, um, a lot of good games. I've been trying to play a lot of demos lately because I don't have a whole lot of money to go out and buy every game. But it's amazing now that I've, I'm actually looking for different games and trying different game types, uh, all the different games that are out there. But we're going to stick to Call of Duty real quick because I want to get back to that rushing. Rushing. All right, we kind of... We kind of... <laughs> straight away yeah from the topic but uh, yeah <laughs> like as soon as we mentioned it but uh, now, go ahead where do you see the next Call of Duty video game going? Uh, Modern Warfare 4 I mean well it's probably yeah. going to be Modern Warfare 4 but uh, well I think it's going to be a very interesting time because it will come out at a time when everyone or at least the most diehard gamers are going to transition to uh, the new platforms so um, what I'm mainly wondering is is will it survive this transition because this transition to a next generation of consoles does provide a lot of room for maybe another shooter brand to kind of swoop in and try and steal uh, some of the uh, share that Call of Duty has now in the first person shooter market if it doesn't release on these new consoles so uh, actually the thing I found m most interesting about the next Call of Duty at this time is how it will handle this transition phase between current gen and next gen and if it will release ports immediately if not later on for the new systems but I am mostly afraid that uh, Modern Warfare 4 will continue the uh, you know the slow but uh, a certain change to less less open maps and more urban close quarters small maps which I find kind of depressing because I always, you know, m mostly enjoyed long range gun playing Call of Duty, you know, mainly sniping, but also some light machine guns and shotguns here and there. I basically enjoy everything, but long range has always been my preferred game style. And if Modern Warfare 4 continues the end of small map design, I would find it pretty disappointing. Oh, wait. Alright, how long have you been playing Call of Duty? Ever since Call of Duty 4, 2007. Okay, um, me as well. Um, I, I have been uh, pretty active. I, I always had the game when it came out. And I've always been an advocate of the game. But is it that we have just matured in our tastes? Or, I mean, really, at this point, that you know, Call of Duty is still a bestseller, man. Yeah. There's a 12-year-old fucking market that wants close quarters, urban, quick kill, rushing maps. As much as I, as much as I hate it, yes, that is very true. So I don't blame Activision for, uh, for steering Call of Duty in this direction because that's where the money's at and it's a business after all. But uh, um, I, as when it comes to me, I have always been like this when it comes to Call of Duty. Of course, I wasn't as varied and versatile as I am now because I'm of course better at the game but I always took more of an interest to long range gunplay when it comes to Call of Duty even in in uh, uh, Call of Duty 4 I was always sniping that wasn't before I used anything else than a sniper rifle and with always sniping I mean actually sniping of course I I, <laughs> I remember there was a phase where for about a month I would not go for the kill Unless I was absolutely 100% sure I would get a headshot. So I had the Golden Dragon of in no time in uh, Call of Duty 4, which basically required to get 150 headshots with each sniper. It's pretty insane. But um, 
I, of course, I didn't know as much about the game back then as I do now. It was really in Modern Warfare 2 when I started to uh, uh, to distinct the different kind of game styles and try to, you know, expand myself as a player and use different shit. Uh, but I have always been focused on long range, especially when quickscoping became the new hot thing in Modern Warfare 2. I was immediately like, this is bullshit, scout typing is where it's at. So I don't think I have matured as a playing player, even though I've definitely grown as a player. But I think Call of Duty and Activision is starting to realize where the money is at more and more. Uh, either that or uh, the 12 year old market has been, well 12 year old, uh, let's just call it young player market has increasingly expanded over the past few years more than I think it would, it, it would have or it should have. But uh, at least way more than back in the day in Modern Warfare 2. And even in Modern Warfare 2 there was a giant amount of younger players. And I think that really shows in uh, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, that uh, Activision started to, you know, realize this. Alright, we're hitting 21 minutes. So I'm going to ask the next question. And then I'm going to give you a response. Uh, we're going to put up your response. And then I think if we're going to end this topic. We're going to continue it at another time. I play Call of Duty, I played Call of Duty for so long that I grew tiresome of trying to go for a KD. I do a lot of knifing, I do a lot of sniping, I play around with quick scoping. I go out and I have fun, you know, I enjoy playing with other people. I like I like the um the idea of the uh competitive game mode that they put into the new Black Ops 2 uh, league play. Um, but... By the way, by the way, on a side note, I think they completely killed league play when they removed the objective play from it. Because what's the point of having a competitive game mode if oh you can only play team deathmatch? I think that's kind of bullshit, but uh, continue. Did they really? I didn't even... Yeah, they did. I didn't even know that. I wanted to start league play when I was Master Prestige, still not there by the way. But now they removed objective gameplay, and I have zero interest in league play. Wow, I didn't even realize yes. they did that. See, it's see more pandering. Um, I am going to call it a 12-year-old crowd, but this is going to be the final question. Are There's a lot of us YouTubers that have been playing COD since it first dropped, you know, 2006, 2007. Have been watching videos on COD for five, six years now, um, have now become commentators on YouTube regarding Call of Duty. With all, I see a lot of negative criticism coming from the larger YouTube channels about Call of Duty now, and whether, why, I'm not going to debate why it's, but are the bigger YouTube channels going to bury Call of Duty? Very Call of Duty and hate you mean or complaining? Yep. Well, <laughs> as uh, as as um, as far as burying it goes, with all the attention people give it towards, you know, negative sides of Call of Duty, then yes. But I don't think they're actually killing it when it comes to uh, the game on YouTube itself. Bitching is just naturally something people like to do, and um, I think it's something uh, you know something people just take to. And I don't think all of the bitching on the game Call of Duty is necessarily real. I, I even think some people just do it because people it's cool to do. love to bitch. Yeah, it's a cool thing to do. It's it's super mainstream. Let's hate on it. Let's all bitch about Call of Duty. And a lot of these, uh, you know, people that watch them, they I don't know. Maybe they I, I used to be like it. They have so much free time on their hands that they. Just play play Call of Duty until um, they get sick of it, but yet they play more. And then, of course, you'll get into the mood of complaining about it. And then you'll go to a place where you can hear your opinion revoiced about how bad the game is, which it's not. Play to have fun. Always play to have fun. If you're playing and you're not having fun, then you're completely missing the point of a video game, unless you're you're playing professionally and you're making money. Shit. Which is what a lot of these bigger YouTubers do, so I don't blame them for playing Call of Duty that much, if they, if that's how they, uh, you know, 
put yeah. bread on the table. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, the 12 year old market's going to win. Call of Duty's going to be a rusher's game. It's inevitable. Um, and if you don't like it, I, I still have hope you don't for like it, for You know, don't play it, but just play yeah, to exactly. have fun. I, 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 and that's what I do. You see, my channel, unlike a lot of channels, I upload weekly or twice a week rather than every day or four times a week. And it's simply because I I don't feel like putting in more time. And it's not because I don't have fun, but it's you have to do everything in moderation. And the same thing goes with Call of Duty. If you play too much and you don't have fun, then you completely lose the point of having a YouTube channel and posting shit you... Yeah, um... I really, I want to take this time moment to thank you for for just being proactive and doing this call with me and uh, working with the Smokers Lounge. Well, no need to thank me. It's my pleasure. I do it because I enjoy it. Like I said, if I wouldn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. I want to thank you for having me on your channel. Oh, uh, man, I just, uh, I, like I said, I love talking to people. I think this is great. I, I would like to do this again very so soon. I. And uh, that's about it. I mean, I, we're running 26 minutes. Let's just say Happy Easter and uh, put a wrap on this baby. All right. So, yeah. This has been Captain Koopa oh. and, of course, Chris. And Happy Easter to all of you. But we don't believe in it. Love <laughs> you all. <laughs> I don't believe in zombie Jesus, but a Happy Easter anyway. All right, guys. Love you all. Enjoy us tomorrow for this, on the Smokers Lounge. And, uh, yeah, Happy Easter. Peace, Peace. out. Hey, thanks for watching guys. Go check out today's fucking feature video and I will talk to you tomorrow. Don't forget to watch the YouTube tip of the week every Monday. Love y'all. Peace out, motherfuckers.